Welcome to this video where I describe the data source usage with the JDBC framework. This video is part of the data sources video series, so have a look in the comment to have a link to the other videos. I mention here the data source with the JDBC framework. In the other videos, you can see how you can use it with the JPA framework. And there are also videos that describe how you can configure your favorite database to use it with Payara Server and Payara Micro. It is not the idea that I describe all the functionalities of the JDBC framework, only how you can use the data source and the comparison with JPA, for instance. The JDBC is part of the Java SE specification, so that means it's not part of the enterprise, and it is quite low level. Connections, statements, and result sets, you need to retrieve and manage them yourself. And failing to close them or uh, properly managing them will result in errors and exceptions later on. This means that a lot of boilerplate code is required, especially if you compare it to JPA, to have a successful JDBC application. The advantage of the JDBC framework is that you have full control of the queries that are executed against the database and that you can write some very complex uh, queries. So let's have a look how you can define the data source within the JDBC framework. I have created here a simple demo application to show you how you can refer to the data source. I have defined here a single dependency for the Jakarta API, although, as I mentioned, uh, the JDBC is not part of the enterprise specification, but of Java SE. But the rest of the demo application, the REST endpoints to access the data in the database is using, of course, the enterprise. And that's the reason why I have put here the Jakarta dependency. When you retrieve the connection, again, you refer to the GNDI name that the connection is available in the server. Since we are using Payara server, a Jakarta compliant server, there must always be a default connection available to an internal database, which is called underscore underscore default. For this example, I'm using that database. Have a look at the other videos for your specific um, database, how you can configure a connection to it. As mentioned it, in the overview, it is low level, so you need to maintain all the parts yourself. So first, you need to retrieve a connection you need to prepare a statement which is sent to the database and then you can execute that query and look over the result set. Here I'm executing a simple query to the company table where I specify a certain parameter as ID. Don't forget to use placeholders here because otherwise your application can be vulnerable because they can uh, do an SQL attack and they can change or delete your database. Also make sure that everything is closed, as I mentioned. So that's the reason why I'm using here try with resources statements so that all artifacts, the results set and the statements here and the connection are properly closed. The company Pojo that I'm using here has no specific annotations like the JPA equivalent uh, because we are just using the standard Java SE and we are using the constructor to populate the values. To finish this demo, I've defined a REST endpoint where you can query the database for a certain 
a record and the result will be returned as, as, as JSON. And I'm also initializing the database here with uh, a default value so that we have something to show you on the screen. Since it is a Maven application, um, I can build the WAR file that we need to deploy with the command maven clean package. It compiles uh, the Java code, it assembles everything in a WAR file, which is then ready to be deployed on the server. Here I have the a Payara community server running. It is the latest versions at this moment, it's the 2020.7 version, and it is running at the standard domain one is, is running, as you can see, with the list domains command that the domain one is running. That means that, that I can deploy our WAR file that we have created with the deploy command. And that application is then now ready on the server to be used. There is, in the case of GDBC, there is not much verification which is done upfront. Uh, this is in contrast with the JPA one. Everything is done at runtime to see if the database uh, is active, that the connection is valid, etc. If we then call that endpoint with the correct ID from the table here at the ID one of that company table, we receive the result as JSON through that REST endpoint. And then you can see that the data source uh, of the um, JDBC framework uh, is used. As you have seen in the demo, you can refer to the data source with the add resource annotation and specify the GNDI name. Once you have that data source object, you can retrieve a connection statements and result sets from there on. And then you can use any kind of functionality which is provided within the JDBC framework. As mentioned, have a look in the comment of this video so that you have a link to the other videos where I describe how you can define that connection, that GNDI name for the different databases. Thank you for watching and see you in one of the other videos. Bye.